All right, so tutorial four is due today, all right? Homework four is due Monday. A lot of pressure. Uh, tutorials are just the bonus points, right? So much tutorial four, 40 pages. So if you couldn't finish it, probably it's, gonna, it's smart to start working on homework four as soon as possible. Um, so for today as well, I'm gonna give priority to the problem on homework four instead of keep working on tutorial four. But if I still have time, I'm gonna go back to tutorial four to see some of the problems. Um, but any questions before I got started? Any problem you want me to run through? Just in case, no? Everyone, everything in the homework? I know, it's hard, right? Four point A, homework four. This is the easier one, but it's good to look at the fundamentals by going through this problem, I think. Let's do it. Thirty milliamps. R one, R two, R three is five. One one seven point five and twenty five. V1 is 45 volts. It's asking you to calculate I4, uh, I0. For, uh, no, sorry, VL. What's going on? Okay. Find V out. No voltage, okay? So we use no voltage method, we use KCL. Remember? Even though it's the voltage method, but it, we use KCL to find out the, the current going in or going out from the, from the uh, each node, right? So how many, it's called essential nodes, right? How many essential nodes do we have in this circuit? We ground here. Just the one, right? Just one. That's a pretty simple problem. Here's a current, current, current. We got one current in, two currents out. So just to use KCL, right? The current here is 45 volts. It's 45 volts at this point. Minus VO will be the voltage drop across these two resistors. So it's 45 minus VL uh, divided by 5 plus 117.5. That's going to be the current flowing into, into the node on the left. And current flowing out here from top to bottom is direct the voltage across it divided by the resistance. And here it's given. 30 milliamps, we just uh, convert it to, to amps, it's 30 times 10 to the minus third power amp. Okay, just one variable. Should be very easy to calculate for the first problem on homework four, which is due Monday, okay? Find the power developed by the current source, power. Developed, developed, remember? Developed is delivered, right? So if you was any type of component, just assume it's a black box, right? You've labeled the voltage drop, the real voltage drop, plus minus, and you just look at the current direction, it's going into the anode or going out from the anode. So what's the voltage? So you calculate for VO, right? So VO will give you a, a certain value, right? 
and I believe it's um, you couldn't tell because you have the two sources applying to it at the same time but I see a positive value uh, by uh, using all these parameters I have over here it's a it's a positive value over here okay so it's from that's VO or VL VL is over here which is the same voltage the same same wires so the voltage here plus minus is the same voltage here plus minus right mm -hmm. that's the real physical voltage across it since you calculate it that's a V out <coughs> same voltage here so you can tell that it's going into it right it's absorbing so the power developed by this type of thing will be negative right because it's actually absorbing so it's developing native power does that make sense yeah that's a native power any question on this easy yeah just use v out the voltage times the current and put a negative sign in front of it that's part b of the first problem on home of four find the power developed by the voltage source yeah you have the current here which is this one going out so it's actually delivering so it's going to be a uh, positive power because it's an anode current flowing out from the anode so it's actually delivering current or power to the outside uh, to the rest of the circuit so you use this one times the current to find out the power yeah I think these other problems other questions are already cover in the first two weeks of the semester right this is not a big deal here the next problem ask you to use note voltage method to solve for this circuit do I need to list it oh let's do it let's do it just in case Hundred, one K, five hundred, two K, three K, two fifty. Yeah, it's just a one one voltage source, and also the voltage source, the voltage is given. Or the voltage given is at eighty volts. If you see something like this, you got resistors, but nothing else. No, no uh, dependent source, just a one source, and with a bunch of resistors, you can solve for everything. You just use whatever KCL, KVL, or node voltage mesh method, which we are going to cover in a bit. So you can find out the current, every single branch current, and every single node voltage by just using one of the methods. Okay. So if you are uh, trying to use the node voltage method, how many? Yeah, let's don't try to you know memorize all these concepts. How many nodes do you have, or how many nodes do you want to use? It's called like essential nodes, right? Yeah, three nodes. Essential nodes has three branches connect to it, three or more branches connect to it. So it got three branches, three branches, three branches. So have three essential nodes. So list, just list the node voltage um, equations. So are getting uh, using KCL. Here's one current. And now you know that because you just have one source, there's no, no other sources. What's happening is this single power supply is going to push current from left to right. So what's happening is it's always going to the, uh, to the right and then come back to ground. So actually, you know exactly where the current uh, flows, right? It's always going to the right and going down because it's coming to, uh, it's trying to come back to ground, which is a cathode. So in that case, you have, uh, look at this node first, right? V1, V2, V3, 80 volts minus V1 over 800, will give you the current here, 
current in equals the current out. So current out um, is V1 minus V3 over 1K plus V1 minus V2 over 500. That's the first node voltage equation. And the second comes here, which is V1 minus V2 over 500, which is a current flowing in, and I got a two flowing out. So the current flowing in equals the current flowing out, which is um, V2 minus zero, which is ground here, right? Divided by 3K, plus V2 minus V3 over 2K. And that's the second node voltage equation. You got a third one over here, one going in, so this is actually going this direction. So two going in, one going out. So it's V2 minus V3 over 2K here, right? From left to right, that's why it's V2 minus V3. It's from left to right. So V2 minus V3 is a drop from left to right. It'll give you the current from left to right as well. Plus here, V1 minus V3 over 1K equals the one single current going out from this node, which is V3 minus zero, which is ground here, over 250. So we have uh, three variables and three equations. You can easily solve for all the three voltages. Once you know the three voltages, you can solve for everything. Everything. The currents, power, just anything in the circuit. Okay. <coughs> That's the second problem. Next one. Note voltage method. So the problem has a dependent source in it. That's problem 4.27, I think. I, 7.5 ohms, 2.5 ohms. Here's IX, it's 10 ohms, plus minus, that's a V, 2.5 ohms, IX, that's another interesting thing. This is a current control voltage source. This is the I is a current, and plus minus shows it's a voltage source, it's a current control voltage source. <coughs> 1 ohm, here's V. No, so V here, V here. So the voltage are the same. Right? So V is 42 volts. And I, which is here, 16.8 amps. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely calculate for everything. Everything in the circuit. So it's asking to use a node voltage method, and you have one, two, three nodes, right? Just label it, label it. V1, what's the voltage here though? Can you say the voltage here, see this voltage source? The voltage here is just the IX. Is that correct? No. That dependent source is the voltage, show the voltage crosses through terminals, right? One, Talking about the voltage here is the voltage here compared to ground, compared to the bottom. Not from right to left, but from top to bottom. So V2, V3. Is the voltage here V? Is V2 V? Is V2 V? Ground, right? Is V2, so V2 is the voltage from this point to ground. So V is also the voltage from here to ground. So is V2 V? Yes. So V. So V2 is given actually, because labeled as V. I, I didn't design this problem, okay? This, it's very interesting. Why is labeled that two voltages as a V? You use a no voltage method to find V in the circuit. Oh yeah, so I think it's mislabeled. It's labeled as V out. Don't get confused. So the problem here, I can show you right now if you want to look at it. You see, 
What's happening is it has a voltage here. It shows V, and it labels the voltage across it as V as well. But I, I think it's unintentionally uh, just made a mistake. It's it's it shouldn't, right? It's asking you to calculate V to find V, but V is given, which is 42 volts already. <laughs> so this must not be V, right? Like it, it should be like VX or like VL or something. You know what I mean? V is the voltage source. This shouldn't label the two Vs at the same V, right? Should be differentiated. Okay, anyway. So it's calculating VL. How do we do it? So VL is basically V2, right? If you calculate V2, find out V2, you know VL. So we got a current, current, current. So 16 point, oh, 16 point A amps here going in and two going out. That equals what? Equals Ix plus this current, V1 minus V2 over 2.5, which is the current from here to here, right? Before we forget, what is Ix? V1 minus zero over 7.5. Since you introduced a new variable, <laughs> you just want to include this one here. So um, you can solve for it at the end. The second note, you've got a current here, which is V1 minus V2 uh, over 2.5. And current going here, going here. This voltage, uh, this current is <coughs> V2 minus 0 over 10 ohms. Plus, what's the current here? No, you use the voltage, subtract another voltage. The, the goal to do that is to uh, use Ohm's law to divide, divide that number by the uh, resistor. But you don't have a resistor here. Is the current here X? It's a voltage source, it's not a current source. You don't know the current. How to find a current? <clears throat> Just assume it, like I why. <laughs> Let's see what's gonna happen. All right. I don't know. Next, same current, right? I y. I y. We got two currents. I y goes in. This equals V three minus forty two over one ohm here. And here's V3 minus zero over 2.5. Are we getting into a problem by introducing IY here? So IX is a voltage. Um, Oh. Here's Ix. So we know that V2 minus V3 is what? Oh, sorry, V3 minus, because that's plus minus, right? V3 minus V2 is Ix. Okay, so these two equations are not being used, and we are we are we are we should be fine, I think. Let's see, I one, I two, I three, uh, V one, V two, V three, and the X. So we need one more equation, which is um, yeah has to get a one equation to to you know figure out represent the connection here. How?
because now all the equations, none of them shows you that the con oh this one shows the connection here actually, but not none of them shows the shows the connection like this and this. What should we do? So, can we just cancel I Y? So let's don't cancel it, right? Just plug in this one here, then problem solved. Replace it. So I Y is gone. I X equals what? We have a, we have I X is equal to V one or seven Y X. So don't we have five equations and five terms? We have V one, V two, V three, I X. I Y. I Y yeah I Y is cancelled. Oh yes, you can put I Y here. Yeah 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 sure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah yeah that's right. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. Oh, because that's plus minus. Oh, okay. Yeah, even though I listed, yeah, five equations, five variables, right? V1, V1, V2, V3, I, X, I, Y, right? Five equations, five var variables can solve for that. But actually, this one can be directly replaced by this equation. So I got a four by uh, four and four, right? Either way, either way. Make sense? Questions? No? Moving, mesh, mesh current method. Are the recorded videos helpful at all? You watch the videos a yeah, little bit? Okay, cool. And you didn't subscribe? Just kidding. Plus minus V delta, 10 ohms, 2.5 ohms, 20 ohms, V delta over 2. Okay, mesh, mesh. I think I introduced the mesh current method, uh, was that on Monday? Yeah, real quick. But now let's redo it, repeat it. So the way to do that is you draw two mesh currents, the two meshes, just draw it. Easy to follow, right, just draw it. And label it as I1, uh, I1 and I2, like that. I1 and I2. Now use KVL. Remember, mesh, current, method is actually using KVL, uh, but the no voltage method uses KCL, right? So KVL, you start from you're traveling, start traveling through the mesh from one point, from here, for example, you can start from any point, doesn't matter. So starting from here, if you see a negative sign, you put a negative sign in front of the voltage. If you see a plus, you um, draw a plus. Uh, sign in front of it. So this one is minus V. So V is 85 volts. So this will be 80, uh, negative 85, right? Because you are assuming I, I1 flowing clockwise. So it's gonna cause the drop from left to right. So this drop could be eventually could be negative, but it's okay since you assume plus minus. So let's just keep this um, sign convention for now plus minus, assume this plus minus by following I1's direction. And that will be minus 85 plus I1 times four ohms. And now it comes down here, right? And this is 
the overall uh, effective current will be I1 going down minus I2 because I2 comes spike is going to go up. So the overall effective current going down will be I1 minus I2 plus I1 minus I2 times 10 ohms. And then come back here plus I1 times 2, which is 0, right? So that's the first mesh. Before we forget, you know the voltage here is V delta. So I1 minus I2 times 10 ohms, which is V delta, right? And now for the second mesh, we can start from here uh, using I2's direction as a positive direction. Right, start traveling from here uh, clockwise, not clockwise this time as well. Um, so the first one you are seeing is the drop here um, by following I2's direction. So this becomes I2 minus I1 times 10. Okay, you see a plus sign first because you are following I2's direction. So I2 minus I1 times 10. So overall effective current going up will be I2 minus I1 times 10 will be the voltage drop from, uh, from bottom to top. And then following I2's direction, is plus minus from left to right. So you are getting plus I2 times 2.5. And then comes down to the dependent uh, voltage source. You see a minus sign in front of it first. So do a minus V delta over two. And come back here. It's uh, plus I2 times 20 ohms, which is zero eventually. So you have I1, I2, V delta, three variables, three equations, solvable, right? Any questions on this? Pause for a second. Is that clear? Okay, we can always revisit the notes and videos after the lecture. Cu match current method to find V1 in this uh, circuit. I2, 120 ohms, is labeled as V2, 80 ohms, A ohms, 40 ohms, plus minus V1, that's I1, I1 is 5 amps, I2 is 1.4 amps, All right, just the two independent source, right, so you can solve for everything in the circuit. So they're asking to use match current method to find V1. How many essential nodes? Uh, no, not nodes, right? So I have to use mesh, mesh. So let's do it. I1. Mm, we really want to do that? Yeah, it's okay. Let's just take all the steps. It's I1, I2. I3, I4. However, we know I1, I4 already, right? It's a given. What is I1? Five amps. Yeah, five amps, right? So I1 is five amps. What is I4? 1.4 amps. It's given. So, do we still need to list it? No, let's just don't list it. Let's just do I2 and I3, okay? Oh, we still have to because this one is shared with this mesh. So we still have to use I1 here for the equation. Um, so let's directly start from here, for example. We don't, we don't need to start from here, but some of the cases you have to start from the current uh, one terminal from the current source. It just assume the voltage here as like Vx, right? Since right now we don't have to because it's already given. So let's don't do that. And let's start from here. So traveling clockwise, so we're seeing I2 minus I1 
times 40, which is the first voltage, plus I2 times 8 here, and plus I2 minus I3 times 80, which is 0, right? That's the first one. Second one, we'll travel from here, are seeing I3 minus I2 times 80 plus I3 minus I4 times 120, 120 ohms, equals zero. Okay, four variables, four equations, <coughs> solve for everything in the circuit. Alright, any questions on this? I think, yeah, that's it. This is the second last one. Now here's the last one. So home four is pretty short, but tutorial four is <laughs> super long, 40 pages. Home report is fine. That's problem Vx, 25 ohms, Vx over 2, so that's a voltage control current source, I, V, 2 Ix, that's a current control voltage source, I is 23 amps, V is 10 volts, Asking you to do the oh, would you use a no voltage or match current method? So I have an option here. Which one would you like to use? I like to use mesh, but seems like it's. Um, so it's asking like, would you use the no voltage or match current method to find? power absorbed by the 10 volt source. And there's a standard answer to that. <laughs> I assume they want us to do no voltage or they're gonna find the current. Uh -huh. um, find a current through it, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, either way, but let's see which one's easier. So you have uh, one, two, three, four nodes, right? Yeah, either way, I think, works. Is that the standard answer? Or? Yeah, it's a standard answer. Is that crazy? You can use both methods to uh, solve for that, but it's asking, like, which one would you use? And there's a standard answer. <laughs> it's like, you can use both, but if you use the other one, you'll lose some points. <laughs> anyway. Which method did they want to see? Note, just let you guys know. Yeah. So. Uh, but it could be wrong. It could be a different circuit on, from your uh, on your side, right? If you see a different circuit, it could be a different answer here. And use the method you selected to find the power. So I think that one will give you. Uh, let's do both since we still have time. Let's just list the equations and see which one will be easier. Like, uh, is this voltage known? Ten volts. Ten volts. Right. It's a trap. 10 volts, and this end node points to this node, so I know the voltage here is 10 volts. Is that correct? It's been a common issue for so long, right? 
No, because 10 volts of this battery means the voltage difference between these two terminals. It's not the voltage at this point. When I'm asking the voltage at this point, I'm comparing to ground. So V1 minus zero is not V1 minus V2. So the 10 volts is V1 minus V2. However, the voltage at this point is V1 minus zero. Be careful about that, all right? I'm repeating. So first, we got a voltage source here again, right? Similar to the problem we saw. But we can eventually cancel that, remember? Like this, right? We got a voltage source, and there's no way to use the Ohm's law to find a current. We just assume a current, but eventually it's, it's canceled. So let's just assume a current in there, OK? So V1, V1 pushing current down, and this one following current in. So you got a one in, two out, right? So this is a current source, so we know that Vx over two is a current going in, that equals the two currents going out, which is V1 minus zero over two, 25, not two, over 25, uh, plus Iy, right? <clears throat> okay? And V1 minus V2 is 10 volts, it's given here. And IY going in, 1, and 2 going out. So 1 going in, 2 going out. So I1 is going into V2 node. And you got a, so this equals V2 over 5 plus 23 amps. OK, so 23 amps is going into V3 node. So we know that. 23 amps um, equals Ix is going up. So let's adding Ix here. Two going in and one going out. So what's the current going out? Iz <laughs> equals Iz. Okay. And um, so IZ going in, this going up, right, going out, and this is going pushing down by V4. So we got a one going, two going out. So IZ equals V4 over two ohms plus this guy, VX over two. V1, V2, Vx, so many variables. Um, so Iz can be, um, let's just count how many variables we have. V1, V2, Vx, so three Vs. Ix, Iy, Iz. Six variables. We need a one. We need a one more, which is V2, V2 is basically Vx, right? V2 is Vx. <coughs> Anything else? Here's Ix. So we know that 0 minus V3 over 4 ohms is basically Ix. I think this one is ready addressed here. Oh, um, have we done that? Did we miss anything? So uh, 23 amps plus IX. Oh yeah, we should. We should. We haven't, but we should include this one here as well because that's IX. Anything else? I think that's it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. V1, V2, VX, IX, IY, IZ. Six variables, seven equations. Definitely can solve for that. One of them is re redundant somewhere, but it's okay. We can solve for everything in the circuit, right? By using all these equations. Oh, we need one more variable? Let's just assume. <laughs> I'm kidding. Should be fine, right? 
Should be fine. Yeah. Page six. That's the last problem. All right. So let's go back to tutorial four. Okay, cool, yeah, let's do it. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Ooh, I have to redo it, I think. Another mesh here, okay? I1, I2, I3, I4. <clears throat> Start from here. So we are getting I1 times 25 plus B. <clears throat> I think B is given. B is given. Let's just assume this is V. <clears throat> plus here. Um, that's I1 minus I2 times 5, which is 0, right? That's the first one. Second one, starting also starting from here, we have I2 minus I1 times 5. So you, you don't know the voltage across this guy, so you have to assume it, assume a voltage. So which, which voltage was, we should assume over here? Yeah, we can do Vx. So this is Vx, right? Actually, you can use this, these two voltages to find out the voltage difference between these two nodes. But we can also list another equation for it. Um, you know what I mean? So because this voltage is right in known, it's Vx. So we just assume this guy is Vy, right? Then we know this will be the voltage here, uh, the voltage across this one, if you assume this is plus and minus, so what's the voltage difference between these two? Yeah, exactly. And then here. Oh, plus what? Plus I2 minus I3, right? Times four. And you're asking, well, why don't you just use Vy? Yeah, we will later. Because we already introduced this variable here. We have to do it. I've listed another equation later, okay? Let, but let, now let's just use the currents as much as possible. And this is zero. And now we start from here. We're getting I3 minus I2 times 4. And here's the voltage dependent source, but we can directly write it down, which is minus sign in front of it, 2Ix, you know, because this is given. That's a voltage dependent source, current dependent voltage source. And here is um, I3 times 2. Okay. Now we need another one. We can start from here, which is the mesh on the top. Okay, so we have to find out the voltage across this current source first. How do we do it? It's a lot of variables, right? If we just assume it uh, now, we will be able to figure it out later. Let's just assume it, Vm, Vn, for example. 
all right so the first the first voltage is vm minus vn will be the voltage across it from here to here that's vm over, uh, minus vn and that one it comes down here you have to plus 2ix right and then come here plus vy minus vx and then here will be minus v all right four already now let's figure out the other ones let's figure out the other ones so what is vm vm and vm what are they so vx is over here right so vx getting boosted by v you got a vm so vm is vx plus v Now you'll figure out why we want to use no voltage method, <laughs> right? It's just too many equations. So this Vm is Vx at this point because this is ground. So Vx getting boosted by V, you got a Vm. So what is Vn? Vn is Vy getting boosted by this. Okay. I1, I2, I3, I4, <clears throat> so 4, and Vx, Vy, Vm, Vn. <clears throat> I1 to I4, so 4 already, and Vx, Vy, Vm, Vn, so 8. We need 8 equations. So now we got 5, we need 3 more. What are these? See here, Ix. So Vy. Oh, no, we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We need two more, two more. <clears throat> so this tells us that <clears throat> Vy over four will be negative Ix. Right? Vy over four will be negative Ix. <clears throat> what else? Just need one more. <clears throat> Say again? Ix is also unknown, right? So Ix is a known variable? It's unknown, right? It's unknown, yes. So, shouldn't we add that to our list of unknown variables? Because you have I. Oh, yeah, that's four. right. Yeah, good. So, nine. We need nine equations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need two more. Let me know. Here. This is I4, right? Oh, negative I4. Vx over 2 is negative I4. Okay. One more. You feel good. You are not an electrical engineer, right? <laughs> it didn't ask you to use mesh. That's why it's... No, we got it, right? <laughs> standard, standard answer is no voltage message. It's slightly better. Slightly better. You see? Done. Here's mesh. Still need one more. Which one? I think we have an address here yet. So that would be Say again. Oh, we did it right, eh? Did we? We didn't? Oh, we didn't. That's right. Because we just used did the mesh. We didn't uh, do that. That's correct. I1 minus I2 times 5 will be Vx. All right? Okay. Yeah. Just need to know how this works, but he's not asking you to calculate it. Okay? If you still have questions on 2204, we didn't have t uh, any chance to cover that today, feel free to email me, guys, okay, still tonight. <laughs>